fall is here y'all and I just love adding a little bit of coziness to my home when those temperatures go down I like to wrap it up let me tell you about Jenny Kane home cozy perfection have you visited their site talking about new accents scents furniture they really breathe new life into your home Jenny Kane home has everything you need to transform your space into a luxurious sanctuary our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique 15 at checkout that's 15% off your first order J E N N I K A Y N E dot com promo code Dominique 15 curate your dream home with Jenny Kane ladies let's talk shapewear whether you have a wedding coming up special occasion a specific dress you want to look right in it you don't want to have any panty lines bra lines let's talk honey love you know I love their shapewear for one good reason because it doesn't hurt <laughs> you feel hugged and not suffocated whether you're a bride whether you're a guest whether you have an office party whatever it may be Honey Love Shapewear is the way to go. You need to check it out. Treat yourself to literally the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com over 50. Use our exclusive code and get 20% off honeylove.com over 50. After your purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Say yes to every adventure with Honey Love. Hungry Root is the easiest way to eat healthy, and you know I love to. They send you fresh, high-quality groceries, simple, delicious recipes, and essential supplements. It's like having somebody else do all the planning and shopping so you don't even have to think about it. Hungry Root gets to know your personal health goals, your dietary restrictions, favorite foods, how much time you want to spend cooking, and more. Then they build you a personalized cart with all your grocery needs for the week, including easy, four ingredient recipes to put those groceries to use. Right now, Hungry Root is offering over 50 and flourishing with Dominique Soxa listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com over 50 to get 40% off your first delivery and your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com over 50. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. Okay, back by popular demand, Holly Dean, the best friend machine. Girl, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. The last time, I don't, honestly, when I last had you on, um, we were embracing my change, you know, my moving up here to the Dallas Fort Worth area, starting a new job, um, you and I having to na navigate friendship long distance. But since we last spoke on air, there has been an enormous amount of change in your life. Um, I would say challenges, obstacles, things that have absolutely caught you by surprise. Um, kind of like a punch to the gut in many ways. Um, just when you thought you were on track, suddenly you, you're questioning whether you are. And I really love, what I love about you um, so much is just the nature of you, you know, we are honest and transparent and, and this relationship that we have has always been about being real. So when we talked about coming on, you said, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to let it out and I'm going to be real and talk about what's been happening and what's going on. And I think it's great because, you know, life sometimes smacks us in the face and we don't know what to do until we have to do. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, where can we start? I guess we could, there's been so much stuff. But I guess I could start with this all began when I decided to move from the high rise that you and I met in and I, you know, my lease was coming up and I was just kind of getting tired of that environment. Also with Revive to Thrive, the business that I have, it was hard to run it out of the 13th floor of a high rise because I had stuff that I was maneuvering and it was just time for a change. And I kind of giggled that I'm like, it's time to grow up because the high rise provides, you know, just this kind of like really fun atmosphere. So it's kind of time to grow up and, in other words, be on my own. So um, I started the process of looking for a townhouse, kind of looked around for several months and then came upon this particular one that happened to be five blocks from my oldest daughter. She's the one that found it and, and so proceeded to move in there in May. Uh, the funny thing about that is in May, um, we had our first hurricane. 
Hurricane Burl, I think. And so I literally was to be moving in on a Saturday and Burl came through on a Thursday. So here I am with these movers and I need to figure out what to do. Well, I had stuff that I need to be out of the high rise and then stuff I had moved into storage um, after my divorce. And I knew that I was going to be trying to get all of that into this particular townhouse to go through it. Anyway, move in, um, no power, uh, no power for about five days, but kind of roll through it. I mean, everybody wants to move into a house with no power, right? So mm-hmm. that, um, ended up getting my storage before my stuff. Honestly, it was pretty kind of traumatic because there was a lot of memories that I really wasn't ready to go through, but knew that I would need to go through them in time. And then eventually I got my stuff from the high rise. The high rise had one elevator. I won't even go into it. Like it was a it was hard, mess. Yeah, it was it was a hard mess. Mess. Um, so that happened in like May 18th. Uh, so for about two months in this townhouse, I navigated an owner and a management company. Neither one were easy to navigate at any time. I needed something fixed that took three weeks to come over. Um, the owner really didn't want to take care of the property. And I learned that because after I got power back, I realized I didn't have a dishwasher and then my freezer, part of my refrigerator froze. So it took them about two months to get me new appliances. Okay. Roll through that. We had another storm, um, went without power for another five days during that, um, time. That's when I went and saw you. Do you remember this? I went to Dallas Mm -hmm. because like his foot. And so it was kind of like an odd coincidence that I go to Dallas, stay in your townhouse uh, while we have no power again, and then come back after the whole Eli thing. I'll back everybody up. My dog was injured while we were biking and broke his foot and ended up on Merritt Street to talk about that. He's actually doing great. You would know that he has a broken foot. The guy who chases squirrels is better than he did before. He just stands with a little bit of a foot that goes like sideways. Um, yeah, we made a news story out of it. Yeah, about, I mean, it turned into a story about pet insurance, in fact. So thank you, Holly, for yet again providing more content. You know, I wish I didn't provide so much content for you. I'm glad you do. But I do. Um, and that ended up to be okay, but that was pretty traumatic, D. I I mean, so here I just moved. Eli broke his foot. I'm in Dallas, another storm. I come back. I know there's been roof damage to the townhouse. They text me and say they're coming by to look at the roof damage when in fact they end up replacing the roof that day. Not that big of a deal, but Libby had not been home in six, six weeks. And if she was home for 24 hours, you know, sleep would have been good, but that wasn't yeah. going to occur. We get through that. Um, and I'm kind of like, all right, finally some peace here. Um, some peace in the townhouse. And then um, I'm traveling out of town and I tell them, hey, I need you to come check out the GFI in the garage. And while you're here, can you come check out that toilet in the master bath again? Because I still don't feel that it's completely right. I don't know exactly what's wrong because I'm not a farmer, but I need y'all to look at it again. So that was on a Wednesday. Um, I left town, Libby left town on Friday. And on Sunday, I get these frantic calls that, hey, are you home? Because people are reporting that there's water coming out of your townhouse. And I'm like, no, not home. Um, And what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So that's when it all began. Um, So I am three hours away. I know at this time, and it's 6 p.m., okay? So it's not like, should I, I did consider, should I go? Should I not go? Contacted my other friend, Roberta who's been so great to help me through all this. And she said, let me just go over there. Mm -hmm. So she goes over there and reports that, you know, my second story, it was a three story townhouse, the toilet that, that that fractured the back of the toilet fractured. I've now learned that that particular toilet has a recall on it. There's many um, class action lawsuits against it. Um, And so anyway, that's what caused the problem. And it was so bad that um, my second floor looked like what was a waterfall just flying down. So after they turned off the water, the result was the third floor was fine. The second floor, I lost all of my living room. And then the third floor, I lost that whole bedroom and it was a bedroom and my office. So technically, I guess you'd say I lost about a third of my home. Mm. Um, D, you don't really realize as a woman losing your home is like losing your foundation. 
Mm-hmm. You know, obviously my foundation is in my faith, which has pulled me through this, but losing my home, especially as a single woman, um, while every time you move as a single woman, you're restarting, you know, and you're just like, okay, I can do this. It's like, you're, you're your cheerleader again. Like it's going to be great. Everything's great. And I, and, and so here I was, I found myself in a flooded townhouse and it was a disaster. I know, um, y'all probably have pics of it cause I've sent it to you, but it was a disaster. So mm-hmm. you would have thought that would have been enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and then here comes the fun. So I get back to town. Um, I'm evaluating the situation and I know I need to find a place to live. So like I said, um, friends come in to help, uh, me get my life back in order, find an Airbnb, uh, a temporary one for, I think that one was going to be for seven days to try and co- try to make it close to my townhouse. Cause I knew that I was going to be having to coordinate workers and get my life out of there move into that Airbnb. I am there for three days and the air conditioning goes out in that Airbnb. So then I'm like, all right. So I pick up and move to a hotel for two days and I go back because they say the air conditioning is fine when in fact it wasn't. They brought in air machines like that were at my townhouse. So I don't want to use PTSD because it's, I don't have PTSD, but obviously it was just like, are you kidding me? I left that. And now it's now at my Airbnb. Um, and so I'm facing this situation. Well, um, two days after I was at that Airbnb, I reached out to an owner of another Airbnb for a longer term. Cause I knew that I was going to need about 60 days to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Um, get your footing, get my footing. Um, and so I reached out to an Airbnb and if I can teach anybody this, there's many ways to talk to, uh, an owner of an Airbnb. Um, this platform particular Airbnb can be, um, tricky Mm -hmm. for a person that knows what they're doing and even more tricky for someone that doesn't. So I reached out with a request to book, um, to this particular owner, immediately starting a dialogue of. Does your home have a backyard and this and this and this, these things that I definitely needed to stay safe in Houston with a dog and, and as a single woman. And so we were talking for about 10 minutes max. And she realized that I was not going to book. She's like, she's not going to book. This is not a good fit for her. But because I sent a request to book, she was able to book me. She immediately booked me. Even knowing you had no intent of going in. The dialogue is all, thankfully, the dialogue is all documented on Airbnb's website. Okay. So I immediately was like, wait, why did you book? Thinking maybe it's a mistake or whatever. And she immediately went into, I'm so sorry mode. And you're out of luck to the tune of $8,000. You know, I don't know about most of your listeners, but not everybody has $8,000. No, no. So she got her grubby little paws on my $8,000. Also, I told her first line, I'm flooded. I'm in, you know, facing a very difficult time in my life. So you would think mercy, grace, kindness, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wouldn't take my calls. Airbnb basically was like, I'm sorry, unless she says no, you just, you're just out of luck. For how long? Well, right now I'm still disputing. So I called my credit card company. I'm in dispute form with them. Luckily, um, you know, we'll figure out what that will be in time. But I used my debit card and my bankers helping me dispute it. But I do want to tell people more about ways to be careful on Airbnb. Mm. Well, I'm so glad that we're having this conversation. I mean, it's not just about this crazy happenstance that happened in your life with kind of a trickle down effect, no pun intended, but yeah. they're, <laughs> kind of, there kind of is. And there is a silver lining in this story that we're going to get to, but I really appreciate just your honesty about this because so many people, I guess, aren't aware of that side of things. And boy, do you have to be careful. Um, but we're going to continue the conversation. There's still more drama before the highlight. We're going to get to it all. But more than anything, I'm just so grateful to see your sweet, beautiful face. And I love you. And you're such a, 
you're such a champ and you're so resilient and you're so strong. And I know that you're learning so much of that in this process. Um, but more of my friend, Holly Dean, after we take this really quick break and we are over 50 and flourishing. Fall is here, y'all, and I just love adding a little bit of coziness to my home. When those temperatures go down, I like to wrap it up. Let me tell you about Jenny Kane Home. Cozy perfection. Have you visited their site? Talking about new accents, scents, furniture. They really breathe new life into your home. I absolutely love their throws. I love their candles. It is kind of a California brand through and through. Elegant simply stated beautiful interior pieces that are really true classics. Jenny Kane Home is the ultimate destination for elevated home essentials. Each piece in their California inspired collection is designed so intentionally. Better yet, the quality is so good that everything looks like it was custom made. But here's the great part. Jenny Kane home pieces arrive within just a matter of weeks. That's what I call winning. Jenny Kane home has everything you need to transform your space into a luxurious sanctuary. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique15 at checkout. That's 15% off your first order. J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com promo code Dominique15. Curate your dream home with Jenny Kane. Ladies, let's talk shapewear. Whether you have a wedding coming up, special occasion, a specific dress, you want to look right in it, you don't want to have any panty lines, bra lines, let's talk Honey Love. You know I love their shapewear for one good reason. Because it doesn't hurt, <laughs> you feel hugged and not suffocated. Whether you're a bride, whether you're a guest, whether you have an office party, whatever it may be, Honey Love Shapewear is the way to go, whether it is the super power short, whether it's the regular type shapewear that's sort of longer in the torso and longer down the leg, uh, their bras, the compression. I, I just can't say enough good stuff about it. I like to have things smooth. I like shape. I don't like hurt. So that's all I got to say about Honey Love. You need to check it out. Treat yourself to literally the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com over 50. Use our exclusive code and get 20% off honeylove.com over 50. After your purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Say yes to every adventure with Honey Love. Welcome back. So if you're joining us today, you are listening to my best friend, Holly Dean, who has just been through it. Holly, just to let people know if they're watching right now on YouTube, because we record this in both video and audio format, if they're watching, they're seeing you in a house, but this is not your home. So we've been hearing about the Airbnb drama that you've been going through, and you're still fighting it out with that one woman who's taking your money and trying to take your money yet again this month, and you're disputing that. But where are you now? Because you're not back in the townhouse. That thing flooded out. Yeah, I will not be returning there. Um, I was able to be released of my uh, lease, obviously, since it was inhabitable. So technically, um, I'm in my third, I think, Airbnb. Um, I've technically lived in about six uh, since in this last month. So I am in the Heights. Um, I will be here till about the, I don't know, October-ish time mm. frame, uh, stay tuned on that. But, um, what's funny D is you've heard me talk about, like, I'm homeless and I want people to understand that I understand there's a difference between my homelessness and other people's homelessnesses or living on the street. Let's just yeah. call it living on the street. Um, no, I'm not living on the street, but I am homeless. I mean, this is, I am subject to um, all kinds of things living in an Airbnb. It's not a safe. I just had somebody walk up to my window while we were taping because they wanted me to help, help them with their unit. Mm. It's just, it's very different. So being, being in my situation without a home, without an address, I had to go get a PO box. Uh, mm -hmm. have you ever done that before? I don't have a PO box because I didn't have an address. Right. Um, and I won't have one for a while. So it is, it's definitely an adjustment. It humbles you a lot. Oh my gosh. Okay. Who would have thought that today's podcast episode would be a two-parter 
thanks to your computer dying in the midst yeah. of you saying um, that you had to get a PO box because you have no <laughs> physical address anymore. And mm -hmm. you were describing this new sort of homelessness that you are experiencing, which is true, even though you are yeah. in a house, it is not your home. You yeah. were you were sharing your Airbnb debacle, which I've never heard of such a crazy thing in my entire life. So you're in another Airbnb. I've lost count at this point. I know it's not forever. There is, there is a happy ending in all of this. Um, but what I love is what you said at the very end before we went blank. <laughs> and that is, <laughs> you said it humbles you a lot. It does, you know, and, and really when you think things are, um, you know, like you've made it through all of it, even last night, it changed again. Um, there's even more stuff behind me because Abby's house is full of mold. So she's moved into my Airbnb. So, you know, Hey, Abby's your daughter, for those who don't know, you have yes, two daughters, sorry. Abby and Libby. My oldest daughter is moving to Austin on the 18th of, the, of this month, but these next two weeks, she's in a house full of mold. So I'm like, I said to her last night in humbleness, hey, any home that is not my home is your home. Mm. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I mean, I you can know, I've signed on the dotted line I mean, and I don't know I mean, what I've signed. <laughs> Is your home. I, can't, I mean, seriously, I can't, I honestly, I say, I think so many times with different people in communications, I can't make this beep up you can't. my life. Um, still very blessed, but very humble, like wow. really humble D, well, wait that, you know, didn't living Abby, out of a suitcase. Didn't Abby just move into a townhouse? What happened? Um, well, she, her house uh, had damage during the hurricanes too. I didn't really know it. She told me, she told me, but I was in the middle of my flood and I didn't pick up on it. And yeah, so she went home yesterday and found mold on five pairs of her shoes. So that's airborne. Oh, yeah. That's horrible. Um, so, and she'd been having headaches, so we can talk about that, but you know, it's just really what you think is enough. Mm -hmm. is not enough. I often tell God, I'm like, Hey, I, I'm good with building character. I don't need any more. Yeah. Don't ever say that. And don't pray for patience. So I'm learning mm -hmm. 56 still learning. But, um, so yeah, I think our, my computer died because I was sick of hearing about Airbnb because I'm sick of living <laughs> in one. It said, Holly, stop enough already. <laughs> Let's yeah, get to the stop. good stuff. <laughs> Let's get to the good stuff. Um, so yeah, D what else do you want to talk to me about? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, my Okay. Or can I ask the questions? You can do whatever you okay. want to do. Yeah, you know, we, can do we, we can ask each other questions. You know, you and yeah. I, what's neat about us, and, and for those who don't know the full backstory, I mean, my mother connected us, right? She was the yeah. glue that brought us together. But our paths are very similar because you and I grew up in the same neighborhood. We went to the same school. You're apart. So, you know, we, we didn't know each other, but we kind of knew of each other. But it's really neat that we connected in our 50s and when we did, because we were going through very similar life experiences at the time. Yeah. We were both going through divorces. We were trying to get our footing, um, just a lot of turmoil and shakeup. And so we connected, even though um, I would say emotionally, we were kind of wrecked, but we were in different places, but we needed each other at that time. And, and I'm so grateful for you, period. But, but what blows my mind, Holly, is that as you're going through all of this stuff, there are yet more parallels in our life <laughs> that are almost yeah. inexplicable, inexplicable. So first, okay. I want you I to did. share as much as you want to share, obviously. Um, but a very special person came into your life, and um, I was trying to calculate: was it a, is it a year ago now, or how how long? Oh, um, I think it's about seven months now okay. um, that I reconnected with, and I'm going to stick with this person because I just think mm -hmm. that people. Um, that are really close to me deserve the information. People, strangers, it's my business. Um, he's awesome. I've known him since I was 15. Mm -hmm. uh, we reconnected um, because, and people can probably figure this out, he was my, bro my brother's big brother in a fraternity. So we've just, um, he too went through a divorce. And honestly, I told my brother, I thought he was so sweet and attractive and would be fun to go on a date. Who, I had no idea that we would have so much um, so many things in common, love to do so many things. And he's probably one of the kindest men I've ever met in my entire life. I've never had a man like that in my life. And so he's taught me how uh, to be loved, mm -hmm. to be treated and to enjoy life. So it's been fun. 
It's yeah. been really fun getting it, it, and going back into the dating arena and having such a lovely experience. And it's yeah. not like that really in, in the dating arena for our age. I, I don't believe. No, there are, there are a lot of horror stories out there. And I, I yeah. laugh because you and I both reconnected with people from our past. And I think that I know. I know a lot of women talk about that. I, I've heard Holly, you and I are in a large pool of women who have in some form or fashion reconnected with somebody in their history. And there is something very unique about that because there's shared experience, shared people, shared time. You know, you, you're you not dealing with all of that newness and the weirdness and trying to impress somebody. It's like, oh, I knew you when you had pimples on your face, or I knew you when you were, you know, 15 pounds heavier. It's like, who cares? You know, you get to start yeah. in a different place, right? Yeah. So D for me, it was like the easiest thing for me was I use the word and I know I told you this, he's vetted. Yeah. Like, he's vetted. And so I don't have to worry about those things. And not just as he vetted, but the things that we have found um, along this journey about the connections here and there from people we know or life experiences, they're just very similar. And so that's so comfortable mm -hmm. in an uncomfortable arena. Yes, very much. For me, so. it was really hard for me. I mean, because mm -hmm. you don't, A, want to get hurt. You don't want to, like so many things we can go and talk to about what we don't want. And that's mm -hmm. why we don't date. But but it, it was just easy. Yeah. And you guys reconnected at a wedding, right? It was random. So we reconnected because we went to a family dinner after the wedding of my sister-in-law, who's a widow, and she got remarried. And I told my brother, hey, why don't you invite your friend to dinner? And, <laughs> and then the wedding was working. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I was. I mean, oh, everybody kind of knows that. It's kind of a joke just because I thought he was so nice. Um, and anyway, ended up sitting next to each other. Great communication. And um, we were with some young people lately. I mean, last weekend, and they made fun of us because our first communication was through email. Email and they're like, what? What? Old school. And it made complete sense because he is a letter writer. So mm -hmm. he wrote several letters and I was able to respond. And we got to know each other really well through that, which was even mm -hmm. more um, appealing and attractive because it was safe. Yeah. Which and is, you know, so important to me. You know that. Oh, please. Uh, you and me both. You know, communication is everything in the expression yeah. of emotion and feeling safe in that emotion, being able to receive it, being able to share it and, and having it reciprocal, I think, in a variety of ways. You know, you, you speak to something that I think is really important to this generation, and that is the power of the written word, the power of the spoken word. Right. You know, you can you can hold somebody and show them that you love them, but it is whole other level when they can verbally articulate it or for a man to beautifully write it in a letter or an email, I find to be so rare and so precious. And I think it just touches us because we grew up with that type of sentimentality. Yes. And you know what, Dominique, the thing that just came to my heart that I think I'm supposed to say is, you know, it, it worked because I was, I had spent so much time healing. And I think we I will spend the rest of my life healing. You know, we don't, you don't get over a 30 year marriage easily, but I spent several years healing, not dating. And so when he came into my life, I think one of the first things he said, he goes, wow, you've done your work. And I really appreciated that because he too has been a person that has done his work healing from his divorce. And so I think it's so crucial that women really pay attention to, well, why can't I find a man like that? Or where did she find a man like that? And it's all in God's timing. That's timing mm -hmm. and you're healing. And so that's why I think it, it has worked. Yeah, I agree with you. I think um, we have to we have to do our own work and we have to do the hard stuff. You know, God asks us to do it. We grow in it. That's actually when we learn and grow the most is in the dirty, the ugly, the uncomfortable. And um, Lord knows you and I have had you know, about of that, of dirty, ugly, and uncomfortable for a myriad of reasons. But it, it leads you to a greater sense of clarity, character, and being able to stand on your own footing, which is so important because you never want to come from a place of dependency, right? You don't want to come from a place of need. You've got to be whole first. You've got to be whole and complete in yourself, your life, in your love, in your relationship with God. And only then are you able to receive what he has in store for you. Yes. Real fast. Something that came to mind. Also, I keep saying that, but we uh, went to counseling 
And the counselor said something really cool, which, you know, she did a diagram and I thought was so important for people to understand because she's like, you know, a healthy relationship is not two sticks. And she just drew two lines. Mm -hmm. A healthy relationship are two sticks apart with a whole head, a whole arms, and everybody has their own life. And then you come together to do life together. And, and that's really important that I think so many men and women completely lose themselves Mm -hmm. while getting into relationships. And, um, that's just something that really, I don't know, I just look, you know, when people say things to you and it just sticks, I'm like, yeah, it, uh, I get it. it sticks. Pardon, the, pardon the pun, huh? But, um, yeah, it sticks and it stuck yeah. to me. Like, you know, I, I have, I, I've learned to stand on my own two feet yes. and not need someone. And so to allow someone to come along with me on my journey is not, it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's exciting. It's healthy. It's happy. It's everything. Um, regardless of whatever the outcome might be, if, if he's my person or, or not, we've had those, uh, really, really good discussions too. Mm-hmm. Like, what does this look like? Because it's so important to respect the person that you're spending time with. A hundred percent. And you know what else? I'm so glad you brought that up. It's so important to have these hard conversations from the beginning. You can't kind of put water under the bridge. You can't gloss over things. You know, at this mm-hmm. stage in life, nobody, nobody's got time to waste. It either is or it isn't. And you have to have these hard, open conversations early um, and be real with who you are, you know, and one of the beautiful things that I got to witness was you getting your footing. You know, I got to see that. I got to see this gal who, you know, came from something that just sucked the life force out of her and you didn't know who you were and you weren't confident in who you were. And I saw you become this woman who, who could identify herself and I could identify you based on what you were projecting and what you were speaking. And I saw this boldness and confidence coming over time that was so beautiful to witness, you know, and you are like ripe, you are ripe for you a great relationship. You are ripe, ripe for, you know, success in whatever it is that you want to do or wherever it is that you want to be. Um, but I think we all, have, like you said, we all have to do that important work in order to be ripe for the picking, so to speak. Um, and one of the other commonalities we have is that our relationships and your relationship with this very special human who's adorable is long distance. <laughs> so yeah. you've, been, you've been navigating that too. Yeah. I mean, really, honestly. So I have family in Martindale, which is near San Marcos. Mm-hmm. And as I told at the beginning of this second set of our, uh, of this podcast is Abby, my oldest child is moving to Austin, September 18th. Libby, my youngest child is still living with me, but never here um, because she's on the campaign trail. But uh, so, well, you know, a they're... political reporter for those uh, who she don't know, is. and they don't know, but your Libby is a total television political reporter rock star. She's amazing. I'm, we're going to see her big time. Libby Dean is a name you're going to know because she's incredible. Yeah. And you must be so proud of both girls. I, I am. And, you know, I could do a whole podcast on that. Um, yeah, the blessings of having kids and seeing them succeed is such a gift as far as being a parent. And I'm, I'm lucky to do that. And, and I think I just had to get real with myself that I want to do life with my girls. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Abby's moving to Austin. Libby's going to be... She, Hopefully her goal is DC and here I was going to be in Houston and continue to get flooded and hurricaned and everything like that. Are I just honestly, it? D like, see, D, I feel like God has totally, cause I've been so dutiful in my prayer. Like, give me direction, give me insight. I want to be in your will that grows your kingdom where I can use the best gifts that you've given me. And and for a while, it was really kind of quiet, and I didn't like the quietness in the storm. And I had a sweet friend tell me, he's the quietest in the storm. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. And that that helped me. But as time came on, um, I traveled to New Braunfels. I, like I said, I have family in Martindale. Went there a couple of times. This incredible human, like you said, long distance, lives near there. And I thought, why not? And so I went there one week and I'm like, why not? And then I came back. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared. Right. I'm like, I don't know. You, you listened to me. You guided me. You're like, okay, lean into it. Just come on. Let's keep working through it. And so I went the second time and I feel like God was able to speak to me at that time because I was not so distraught after mm-hmm. being uprooted from my home. And this, this was a thing <laughs> and it wasn't, an easy thing. Uh, so last weekend I went there, I went and searching for a home and I found one and 
What's kind of cool is it was for sale and I decided to reach out to see if they wanted to lease it and they're willing to lease it for short term, six, six months, go give it a whirl. So mm -hmm. I actually inked that contract about 30 minutes before this, this second part of the con. Um, so I'm moving to New Braunfels, like every other Houstonian I'm told. Um, <laughs> I'm excited. It's it has two go. rivers, uh, two lakes at my, at my fingertips and my happy place is water. Yeah. And I think there's a couple of other things I can do there. There's, you know, like, you know, I have a couple of businesses and I see one of them that I could grow there. I see the other one. I am kind of sad that um, Revive to Thrive, the women's wellness is going to be put on the back burner. It needs to for my mental health mm -hmm. uh, to kind of regroup. And all of y'all have been so sweet to tell me it's going to be okay. It's gonna and be it's okay. okay that you don't have that identity right next to you. It's okay just to be Holly. And I'm like, okay, so that's, I've learned that too in this journey. And so I'm kind of excited. I mean, sometimes when a flood comes, why not fly? Why exactly. not fly, baby? Rise and you've been, rise above you've been, it. I know. And you've been telling me and encouraging me. And I do have such peace in my soul. Like I woke up this morning, you know, with that smile in my belly that I feel like it's what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Hungry Root is the easiest way to eat healthy, and you know I love to. They send you fresh, high-quality groceries, simple, delicious recipes, and essential supplements. It's like having somebody else do all the planning and shopping so you don't even have to think about it. Hungry Root gets to know your personal health goals, your dietary restrictions, favorite foods, how much time you want to spend cooking, and more. Then they build you a personalized cart with all your grocery needs for the week, including easy, four ingredient recipes to put those groceries to use. Each order is fully customizable, so you can take their suggestions or you can choose anything you want. They've got fresh produce, high quality meat and seafood, healthy snacks, smoothies, sweets, ready to eat meals, kids snacks and meals, vitamins and supplements, and so much more. I like the ease and simplicity. I'm all about those four ingredient recipes and they taste great. And you know what? They take the stress out of my meal planning because hey, I'm a busy gal. Right now, Hungry Root is offering over 50 and flourishing with Dominique Soxa listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash over 50 to get 40% off your first delivery and your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash over 50. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors, and they take about 20,000 breaths a day. The indoor air we breathe is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, up to 100 times more polluted, according to the EPA. And did you know that air pollution is responsible for nearly 7 million premature deaths globally? So what's the solution? Introducing an air purifier that captured the attention of established media outlets such as CNN, Money, ABC, and more, Air Doctor. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% .99 of dangerous contaminants so your lungs don't have to. This includes pollutants such as allergens, pollen, pet dander, dust mites, mold spores, even bacteria and viruses that make you sick. Air Doctor comes with a 30-day Breathe Easy money-back guarantee, so if you don't love it, just send it back for a refund minus shipping. Head to airdoctorpro.com and use promo code OVER50, and you'll receive up to $300 off air purifiers. Exclusive to podcast customers, you will also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Lock this special offer by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O dot com and use promo code OVER50. It's interesting. I, people are like, okay, you know, Dominique's just pushing Holly to do exactly what Dominique did. And I really want to clarify that's oh, not come true. on. Come on. If you're thinking that you're, you're way off base, my, you know, my life's my life. Everybody's life is their, their life. But the conversations that you and I have had in those quiet moments together are always those what if scenarios, right? And I, and I shared mine with you as I was going through my journey as well you know, and leaving a place that had been home for me my entire life, practically a place that I never thought I would leave. And as I was adding everything up, right, just like you were doing, you know, you're, you're kind of tallying your list and you're saying, okay, you know, there's this to move toward, but there's this that I'm letting go of. 
And the one thing I kept saying to myself over and over, and it was the same thing I kept repeating to you. And it's the same thing I said to Courtney, by the way, um, when she came up here, Houston or wherever home base is for you is never going away. It's never going away. So if whatever you try doesn't work, you don't like it, it's not a good fit, a relationship doesn't pan out, whatever, it's not like this is a forever decision. I mean, it could lead to other things that keep you there yeah. or maybe move you forward to someplace new, but there's always the opportunity to go back from where you came. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in that fear of letting go that we realize, well, wait a second, how hard of a decision really is this? And am I making it harder based on my definitions of what I feel I need in the moment? And sometimes we define our security with familiarity. But I, I personally have found by letting go of the familiar, there's been such a wonderful discovery of, wow, I like this even better. Who knew? Yeah. And, and yeah. that, that's the whole thing. And it, and it could have also gone the other way. It could have been, you know what? This sucks. I don't like it up here. I don't like my new job. This isn't working. And you know what? Great ride. I'm, I'm going back. And that would have been fine too. You know, you address like, oh my goodness, uh, you're just getting me to do the things you do. I, I'm not that woman. You know, I am, uh, I am, I am my own person. And I think that's why our, you were drawn to me as a friend. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't want to be Dominique Soxa, you know, full well, I barely watch what we tape or what you do. Um, you don't want to be not, Dominique Soxa, by the way. I don't, <laughs> excuse yeah. me. Hell no. Yeah. You and, don't. The way you're scrutinized, the way you're spoken to, the way you're treated. And let me just tell you this. I had so many people say, oh my gosh, you weren't at the wedding. Well, like, do you not support it? Let me just clarify right now. I support it a hundred percent. I've never seen you happier in your life. I've never seen your faith grow the way it has grown. And I haven't ever laughed as hard as when I was with Vic at the dinner table. And I almost, you know, I, and it, I got to know him so much in that tiny little time that I can't wait. I got to know him even more than that short window than other times I've been with him. Yeah. Um, and I also want to know how many robes does he have and how many coffee cups? He's taken over. Because I just realized, <laughs> I, I actually, I got like, a, as you well know, I'm not huge into social media. Like, how about you be friends with this guy? I'm like, oh, hey. And so now I'm friends with him on Instagram. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's making my day. <laughs> like, it's so funny. It is. But so I, I, I mean, like, I, I think his side of the closet is only um, bathrobes and coffee cups. It's growing. It's serious. In fact, we had a conversation about coffee mugs because it has taken over. And I said, okay, look, <laughs> just give me half of a row. It's all I need. You can have the entire cabinet. I don't care. Knock it out with your crazy mugs. Knock it out with your wild robes. So for people who don't know, he he does. He's a, he's a voice actor. Um, he produced a web series, Star Trek Continues. He's He's done so many projects, I, I can't even count. But what he's really passionate about is his faith. It's one of those areas where he yeah. and I align really beautifully. Um, we talk a lot about faith. And I encouraged him one day. I said, you know, these messages that you that we talk about or whatever, I said, these would be great little nuggets to put on social media. I said, people are just hungry for this kind of content. And coming from somebody like you, who is an influencer in a different type of a world, you know, this might be fun. This could be your lane, your way to do it with your creativity and your style and whatever. And so the, the robes and the coffee mugs and, you know, that's who he is in the morning with the hair 10 feet high. And, and he's like, but I'm going to, let's talk about the Bible. Let's talk about scripture. Let's talk about how we can apply yeah. this in life and the beauty of it. And, you know, and I'm so proud of him for doing that, you know, talking about faith online in general has just become, um, such a taboo thing. You know, it's like, Oh, you're going to talk you. You're going to go there. Yeah. We're going to go there. We're absolutely yeah. going to go there. And if you're a believer, you need to go there uh, probably now more than ever. So, yeah. But because of that, you know, we're going to take hits because not everybody believes in that and aligns with that. And that's okay. Oh, you know, well. there, are, there are places and platforms for you too. Um, we get hits in life, even when we're not uh, professing our faith. I think those hits are balanced by the blessings and the glory. Okay. Um, I have I, I have definitely faced those hits in women's ministry and just different things, but it's so worth it. And to watch you when you were on stage, D, even in your um, with your podcast tour, 
uh, to watch the way you communicated your faith. Not that you didn't communicate your faith when we first met, but I went home that night and I probably might've already said this, like it, it, it was a thing for me. I'm like, all righty. And that is so exciting because you have such a platform and to, and to not use it would be such a disappointment, Mm -hmm. but the fact that you are using it makes it even better. Mm -hmm. And those that don't care for it, don't need to listen, don't need to watch. And if, and, and, and and to each their own, like to each their own, I'm saying like, I'm not being rude to them, but to each their own. Yeah, I, I agreed. You know, there's a place for every every person uh, and, and yeah. all of that. But but again, it's you know, it's just where we are in today's day and time. But it's you know, when you have it, when when those seeds are planted in you and you water them and you activate them and you act on them, um, I believe it's really important because people will say, "Well, why? How how is this happening to you?" And you can't sit there and say, "Oh, it's sheer will," or "Oh, I've I've worked really hard on me." Well, so has God. And and if he blesses you in that way, and my feeling is, and you don't share how he blesses you, I mean, you miss out on your ministry to be able yeah. to help people understand what that secret sauce is, you know, why that relationship is so important and to bring others to him. Um, and I just think that's, you know, that's the beautiful part. And I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a preachy type. I don't go out and preach, but when I share my journey, that's so much a part of my journey, just like it is very much a part of your journey too, which is why we talk it's about just, it. It's just the way we speak, you know, to me, I don't sit here and, um, you know, speak about my faith in the preachy way either like you, but it's just a part of my daily life. Therefore it's a part of my daily discussion, my daily dialogue, just, um, the way I speak when it comes out of my heart and really actually D is the only firm foundation I've had. Mm-hmm this last six weeks 100%. And, 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 and without it, I'm not going to lie. I, you know, emotionally, I, it would have been, it would have been very different. Yeah. So I'm very thankful for it. And I'm also thankful for my friends. And, um, uh, but, but these things in life that we are challenged with, this is definitely, I'm definitely in a challenge season really gives you perspective. Mm. What do you really need Holly? What do you really want, Holly? Mm -hmm. What do you, um, as I'm getting the email of all the things I own, because it had the company had to take every single piece of item that I own and put it on a list kind of makes you go, Hmm, Mm -hmm. you sure have a lot of things and what do you really need? And, Mm -hmm. and so some serious purging in your soul, uh, in your stuff, and it makes you just reevaluate how you can live more frequently. Yeah. No, it's so, it's so funny because you, and and this happens a lot. I think, you know, you feel like you're in alignment that you're doing the right thing. I mean, you certainly did. You left the high rise where we all lived, where my mom lived and you moved out of there. You found a really cool townhouse in a really cool part Mm -hmm. of town. You know, it was beautiful. It was about what, almost the the same price, but it was more home right on a little man-made lake or whatever. I mean, it was, yeah. it was really, really pretty. Same price, double the space, which yeah. was important to me because I had stuff in storage and I had, you know, Libby was going to be there. And and frankly, I thought Abby was going to be coming and going anyway. We won't even get into that. So I could just thought I needed more space, mm-hmm. but then when you get in it, you just sit in it and you go, Hmm. Mm, to really need. So I knew the next place I would be downsizing. And when going to New Braunfels, I'm actually the place I'll be living in is about the size of the high rise. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I, it's a good, it's a good space. It is. But I mean, you were in the townhouse for how long? Two and a half months, two weeks of peace, two months of sheer stress Yeah. at a, at a high price point. And, you know, I think, and and, and let me just say this, Houston, um, is a scene. Okay. Mm -hmm. Houston is is. a scene. Houston's another scene. If you're single Mm -hmm. and there's pressure and there's this, and there's, you know, be involved in this and this, and that becomes with just, just different things. And when I went and traveled to New Braunfels, it was just and an easier existence. Mm-hmm. And as I age, we have to pick like, what, what kind of existence do we want? And, yeah. and I, I want an easier existence. 
Yeah. I kind of describe it. It's like a downshifting in a car. It's like, you know, you're not yeah. revving up in fifth gear anymore. It's like, no, you know, I don't, I don't enjoy that. I want, I want to downshift. And you know, that, that happened to me too. And that scene that you talk about, I mean, I was very much a part of it when I was there and my, and my work had me a part of it. I mean, tons of charity yeah. events and luncheons and galas and this party and that, and, you know, this outfit and that, and it, it's just, it's non, it's nonstop and you can so easily get caught up in it. A, because it can be fun and exciting, but it can also be really oh, good. We had a blast doing, doing that networking. stuff together. Yes. But it's, it's, it's one thing, one party, one commitment after another. And yes. there, there's not a lot of peace in that. There's not a lot of soul searching in that. There's not a lot of quiet in that. And, you know, I, I started to feel it, it's funny is because you moved from the suburbs and you came into it and I had already been in it forever and a day. Mm -hmm. So I was already feeling this sort of, Ugh, I, I need out, you know, I need separation. I'm not liking this anymore. And you were starting to get into it. You're like, whoa, you know, this is great. This is fun. Let's go to the parties. Let's go do this and do that. Yeah. And I remember when I came out here and I'm, I'm in between Dallas and Fort Worth. So I'm in much more of a suburban type area and there's land and I drive by and I see some cows and then I may see some horses and then I see some neighborhoods and I'm like, I love this. But yeah, yeah to your point, Point. And I and I think we go through these epiphanies where life changes, our desires of our heart changes, what we feel we need changes. And and having that space and that peace around me and that slower environment and tone is what I need. And it's so funny, Holly, because now when I'm in my closet and I look at my clothes, and by the way, all those clothes are in another closet in this house because they never get worn. And I sit there and I'm just like, you know what? At some point, you're going to a resale store because even having you in my house is like a, I'm holding on. Open door. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? It's Open like, door. you're still there. I still have access to you if I need you, but I don't want you. I don't want that anymore. And so I'm, I'm really, as you talk about purging and cleaning, I feel it's going to continue for me as well as it has over these past couple of years. You know, I think the other thing that we, we do that we need to make sure that we share is journaling. You know, I think so many women, even if you're in a happy marriage and you got great kids and you just stop forgetting or taking time to write down what you want. Mm -hmm. And so journaling has been really good to help me be like, okay, what do we want? And, and, and direction and help. And, and I just think it's, it's, it's okay to have a life change and, and, and I want to say that, like so many women are so terrified for a life change. And I'm not saying, you know, get out of your marriage or whatever. I'm just saying yeah. a life change is healthy. It grows you. It makes you exciting. It makes, you know, you exciting to other people and be brave, be willing to step out of your comfort zone, be do, do those things because you never know mm -hmm. what life will bring you in those moments. I think about even Courtney and moving and she was kind of worried about moving and then she got mm -hmm. there. She, and I know it really grew her too, because we've had those conversations. So mm -hmm. I, I, I haven't liked the last six weeks, mm -hmm. but I am thankful for, I guess the upheaval because D I'm not so sure you know, I would have, I would have been that bold. I would have lived outside or thought of that outside of my comfort zone. Cause I would have just continued doing what I thought I was supposed to be doing. Right. And, and who, and who, and it's so interesting as we say that, and I'm so glad you said that what we're supposed to be doing. By yeah. Who? How, who right. sets that standard? Is that our voice? Is that the voice of fear of what others in our life will say, the judgment of others this supposed yes. to be? Where does that come from? Okay, so hold on. I thought this was really great. Um, when, and we discussed this, when I was knowing that I was, I was supposed to have a Revive to Thrive event uh, yesterday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. and I had to cancel that, which I was like, oh, I mean, I was just kind of like, oh not realizing the canceling that and then postponing the one that I was going to have February, 2025, I said, but that's my identity. Mm. And it was so like, wait, what? wait, why is that a, your identity? But it became my identity because I was no longer a married woman and I didn't have a job and people were asking me, well, what do you do? And I'm like, well, uh, obviously I need to do something. Mm. And then just recently it was, wait, why do you have to do something? 
why isn't just who you are enough at 56? Go do the things because you want to do them. Not that I wasn't doing Revive to Thrive because I wanted to do it. Because believe me, I want to do it. But it was so like, ladies, nobody needs a title because who you are is enough. You don't have to be the best realtor. You don't have to be this. You don't have to be that. Just be you and be happy in your skin. And that's enough. And that to me was so great to hear because I was like, okay, great. Yeah. But when I, when I was in that two years ago, I wasn't okay with that. Cause you know, full well, all the things I did to try and find what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, ending up with, I do believe revive to thrive will continue to thrive just at a different time. Um, and you know, like I, I, you know, I have the other business of charcuterie. New Braunfels is a great area to grow that business. And of course, my love for food will never change. And, um, I, and who knows, maybe, maybe I'll do that more, but just being able to sit and be comfortable and just being okay with doing what I'm doing mm. is enough. Which is a beautiful thing. It's, it's more than enough. It's, it's more than enough. And you know what, even just not doing is, is perfect because the growth and the not doing and the peace in that gives us clarity when we decide to do, because we'll have a better idea of what it is that we want to do. And it's, it's so interesting. I don't, I don't know when this happened of, um, you know, it's such a male like trait. Men define themselves by what they do. And when men stop doing it's why it's why a lot of men don't like to retire or they lose themselves in retirement because their whole lives have been caught up in what they do. It is their definer. It's their moniker. And at some point, and I think because women have entered the workforce um, by choice or by necessity, we too have gotten into that defining by what we do and status and importance. And there is a bit of this, you know, competitiveness that's taking place now in the Absolutely. female world about that. And I would say too, you know, Holly, for you, you, you did the hardest job of all. You were a stay-at-home mom to your two girls. And so when your marriage ended, it meant, okay, you know, my girls are grown. Now what? Now what do I exactly. do? And that was, that was an added pressure on you to A, figure that out after not being in the workforce for how many years? My entire marriage, which was 30. 30. I mean, like, well, married and together. So 30 years. Right. Um, you know, and why do we stay home moms say that we haven't worked for 30 years? That was the hardest job I've ever done. 100%. I mean, so I did work without a paycheck or a title besides mom. Um, and so we women, I think, do go through identity crises, mm -hmm. hence empty nesting. Oh my gosh. And especially if you don't have a relationship, a, a, a good relationship with your mate. Okay. Like y'all's, your identity was your kids. And then all of a sudden they're gone and you stare at each other and you think, okay, what are we going to talk about? I, I don't believe that that was not part of my issue, but we, women do go through identity crises. They retire, they stop being stay home moms and it's just okay to not have a title. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I, that was so, so healthy for me to be affirmed in that way that it was almost more motivating to just do what I really feel called to do. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even, I, I don't know, D there's a, there's this hospice place right next to my neighborhood. And I just kind of sat in it. I was, mm -hmm. I was pulling out of it thinking, are you going to draw me there? Or am I going to mm -hmm. love on those people? Because I feel like my true gift is to love on other people okay. and just share just the happy spirit that God has blessed me with. Even in the craziest times, I still find myself laughing. And mm -hmm. even in those hard days that you, that we talked in the last six weeks, I still felt the joy, although I was, I was terrified and tired and, you know, you just, anyway, all I want to say is no title mm -hmm. is okay. Um, and it's okay to search and it's okay to just sit in the messy, mm -hmm. just sit in it. Yep. Um, Agreed. You know, and, and to even touch upon um, just love in general. I want to really address the nature of relationships because, you know, we've been through some humdingers and, you know, different scenarios and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and I know that, that you struggled in your marriage with how you 
felt you were cared for and treated. And, um, you know, I've been through similar situations on and off. And what I love about where you are right now and your special person, and this needs to be said because it can be said for you and me, and it, it should be said for any woman in any relationship. You are you around this person. You mm -hmm. aren't, you aren't anybody else. I, I don't see you walking on eggshells. I don't see you pretending to be something you aren't. I see you in your full glory as you are being loved and celebrated and cherished and adored for who you are. And you know what else I see? I see this huge release and this peace that comes from just being accepted for who Holly Dean is. Yeah, that's so true. And um, yeah, I, I'm always, as you know, so careful to speak about my previous marriage. Um, takes two to fail. You know, I always say that. Yeah. But now that I am healthier and happier myself, I believe um, when we are in those situations, we draw. I, I never forget that somebody told me, write out who you want to be, put it on your refrigerator, become that person and you will attract that person. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually did. I mean, I think you know this. I put exactly what I was probably, if I were ever to be in another relationship, what I would want in this in this relationship. And it was, it was taped inside one of my cabinets at the high rise. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was moving out with help and I handed this piece of paper to this person and I said, well done. And he said, well done. So I just think it's, it's just important to, to pay attention and to know what you want and not to settle. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be alone than settle. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, and you know that, you know, that I was comfortable just, mm -hmm. of course, we all want to share our life with somebody, but, um, uh, but so I, I, I just think, no. And so when it's right and, and also just learning, that's, what's so great. And no, I don't walk on eggshells. I am completely myself. Sometimes Abby will check me because she's like, did you just say that? I'm like, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, could you be nicer? I'm like, he thinks it's funny. <laughs> like, so why not? Um, but yeah. And, and just being your, ourselves, whether mm -hmm. it's with me, I'm sorry, with myself, with you yeah. or this person or my children, it's just, obviously we want to keep ourselves in check and be polite and ladies sure. and everything like that. But, but, but be being real. able to be ourselves and be real is yeah. the way we should live. Yes wholeheartedly. And I'm getting to do that. I was doing that before I'm going to, and I will continue to do that till the day I take my last breath. Absolutely. Um, and, because it's, uh, it's too uh, important. It's too important not to forfeit that joy. Um, and there is, there is, there is no greater joy than authentically being you and, and stepping out into this world unapologetically for who you are yeah. and celebrating every beautiful thing that's inside of you, what, what sets your heart on fire. I mean, to be able to, it's like you, you say, you know, you and your person, you know, you guys dance around the kitchen and you have fun because dancing and that expression to music is important to you. And you found somebody who shares that with you. And maybe that wasn't his thing until he met you, but because he loves you so much, it's now his thing. You know, that matters. That's the kind of stuff that fills the soul more than anything can. Yeah. I think, you know, also want to go back to, and you know, that I am this way. I, I wish my girl's dad the best life. You know, I, I hope that he can find his own happiness. Therefore he can be the best dad for them. Um, and I say that just because I want to be very careful. I don't want to ever come off like I, uh, I would bash their dad. Um, I don't think you, you um, never do. You never do. I never, and, and I, I always have to say that, um, this person is, we, yeah, we water ski, we dance, we sing, we laugh. We laugh so hard. Um, we witnessed. And I, <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, we laugh hard and we live hard. We play yeah. hard. Um, yes. Uh, this is, I think my sixth Airbnb. Uh, and, I, and, 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 uh, he's been with me. Th he's been with me the entire way. Uh, and I, and I will say that I'm thankful for that, but mm -hmm. you know, 
anyway, I really, I, I want this to be about everyone just realizing in the darkest seasons, valleys in life, you're, it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, as much as I'm continue to get things piled upon me and I, and I joke like another day in the chronicle of, you know, my life, I went to a chiropractor recently cause I've just had such bad back pain from my surgeries mm-hmm. and I think he's just starting to laugh because I like lay in his, you know, lay flat on the bed. And I'm like, would you like to know today's chronicle of home? And he's like, how much time do you have? I mean, so me. I'm thinking, I don't know. I think he's like, oh boy, here comes entertainment. Um, <laughs> but yes, I just, the ladies, uh, if you're in the deepest, darkest season, hold on, mm. you know, because there is, there are, the, the valleys are not every day. The valleys are to grow you so you can get onto the mountaintop to get out, to be able to say, I made it. I survived. I don't like the growth. I mean, I, I'm tired, um, mm-hmm. but I'm still thankful for the growth because my girls are getting to watch me. Yeah. You know, I think some days what they a just go, model you are no, mom, it's like mom. Um, I'm so, I think the greatest words that they say to me is I'm so proud of you. Mm. Well, thank you. I'm thank you. I'm thankful for those valleys because I am able to teach young women that life does go on. Life can be good, mm-hmm. even though you're in a valley. Hold on tight. And so I say, I want to say that to all of your followers and the people that have loved me so well too. Mm-hmm. Like if you're in that valley, like I am, keep holding on tight, believing in more. I was told um, by a new friend, Brett, I would have to give her creds on this. Um, my life coach brought her into my life and she's taught me a lot about how to pray. She humbled me to say, don't get out of bed and request only, only thank God for what thank you God, have dude. and what you want. Yep. And you know what, when you pray that way, mm-hmm. whatever, I don't want us to also come off like, oh my gosh, you know, prayer warriors. But the bottom line is be thankful for the good and the bad. Therefore you can survive the bad yes. and kind of have a window to your soul of, okay, I do want more, you know, thank you. I mean, I thank God for the greatest job that he's going to give Libby and I can't wait to see it. I thank God for the greatest husbands that he's going to give my girls. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and living that way keeps you sane in the valley. Yes, <laughs> yes it, just, it does. Well, it, and uh, it, it, it grows us. It grows us in the valley. And it, it shows yes. that he can trust us with more blessing or, you know, if we have to endure hardship that we can handle it. Um, you know, there's so much wisdom and discernment that comes in those times. And I'm with you, you know, that to me, I, I don't run from the the darkness. I don't run from the pits because I know they're there to help sharpen me. And I see it as that, um, not as, mm-hmm. you know, I, some people can say, oh, you know, God's not being good to me or the enemy's trying to trip me up. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe, but you know, maybe this is your opportunity to become laser focused and do what you need to do and, and do your work and follow the word and, and to get to better, a better place, a better place and have a better testimony once you get to that better place. Um, and you know, the one thing that I, I love, and I heard this from styles, um, you know, he said to me, I know my man, he said the last time he was here, he said, mom, I'm really, I'm really happy for you. He said, you, Oh, that's making me cry. He said, you are with the right person for you. And he said, I've never seen you happier. And I have my son yeah. to be able to witness that and to be able to see his mother have so much joy and for that to give him so much peace, especially because we don't live in the same city anymore. And, you know, I can handle that. I don't know. Maybe he handles it better than I handle it, but but for him to know that that mom's, you know, four and a half hours away, but she's good. You know, she's good. She's solid. She's happy. And for me to be able to model what a fun, loving, healthy relationship is, there's no greater gift as a parent to be able to give to your child, aside from the direct love that you can give them yourself, but is to be a role model in their lives of, of what they should want to strive for and have and value and covet. So I'm just, you know, I'm grateful for that. And and wherever your situation may lead, you know, just the potential for that, for your girls to be able to 
to watch and witness too, to see their mother so happy. And it floods them with joy to the point where they have so much peace, no matter where you are. Yes. And it opens the door for conversations of, you know, for them and, and what they're to look for in a mate. And, and because I very much try to shelter them from, or still do shelter them from this relationship because, you know, we, we never know. Mm -hmm. Um, and he has kids too. And so trying to shelter them as well, but yes, getting to model, I mean, you modeled, even if with your, with your other husbands, you modeled good times. I mean, I I did model good times for my girls, Mm -hmm. but to be able to continue to model it for them in different ways and see that they can see that, you know, their dad was good for me for a a season and a time. Um, but this person is, is better for me in this season and this time. And, and, and they get to be a part of that growth is, is great. And they, they see it and, and it's given them some security, um, and, and happiness wasn't easy at the beginning. It was a little awkward, but we made it through it. Of course you did. That's what we did. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, yeah. So, okay. You're there. Um, well, first of all, what's the distance between where I am and New Braunfels? Is it, is it, I looked it up. Is it the same as Houston or a little shorter? Please tell me it's a little shorter. It's shorter. I actually took your address and my address and I was like, hot dog. I think it's about 45. I think it's about 45 minutes shorter. Is it's it? still not a, it's still not an easy commute, okay? I know. But I know. it's still it, but it's, it's not shorter. Four and a half. But listen, you're gonna come visit me. I've got lakes and rivers versus skyscrapers. Thank you. And you I know have I'm coming. Room. And 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 absolutely you'll come and um and it is closer. And what I love about the area that I'm moving to is there are so many places to go from there. You know, yeah. I'm an hour from this city and that city, and I'm yeah. close to Austin airport, which has great, you know, ways to get it's nonstop here, here and there. And that's appealing to me. And I just think it's a, to me, regardless of, um, having him in my life, it, it's a good city for me to continue to find myself. Mm-hmm. I found myself walking around and exploring and feeling safe in the exploration of that and looking forward to what that exploration looks like with my family that's there Mm -hmm. and who else or whoever else I get to meet there. The community, I picked the community, uh, this little house because literally the front doors all face each other. So I feel sorry for my neighbors because it's like, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. I'm Holly. I'm going to be your as, assessment. As Wendy, my roommate, <laughs> Wendy, my roommate from uh, college would be like, oh yeah, she's a morning person. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> anyway, we, we even laughed about it recently as she visited, but right. um, I just look forward to continuing to find out about myself and mm. meet new people. And, and just, uh, I'm very, feel very blessed to have the opportunity to do so. The financial aspect, the financial stability that I have to do so. And, and D it's, it's a cheaper way of life. I I'm going to be saving a lot of money. And, and that to me gives me so much, um, freedom and less stress, uh, because living in Houston in order to be in a safe place, you're spending a fair amount of money. Yeah, you are. And I will be, yeah, we'll be spending significantly less. And there's a lot of freedom in that for me. There is a lot. There's a lot of, I think, too, maturity and just respect for where we are financially. And I know that that really hit me hard as well. You know, it just being aware because we're, we're not that far away from retirement, you know, what is that going to yeah. look like? And, and are we teed up yeah. for that? And how smart are we now? And what extra, what more can we do now for that final push, you know, into those funds and the, the accounts and all those things. But yeah, you know, you, you start to see the end game and you think, okay, well, you know, do I need all this stuff? Is this really yeah. wise of me? Or am I, am I not being a good steward of the blessing that's been given to me and how can I reframe all of this and do things a little differently? And I'm with you, you know, I, um, it's, it's not as expensive out here where I am and, you know, the quality of life I would say is, is 10 times better. So I, I feel like I've and leveled Your house up. is fabulous. It's fabulous. fabulous. And I, I couldn't, I mean, this house in Houston would be double the amount easily. 
So, yes. you know, Absolutely. I just, you know, I thank my lucky stars and, and our good Lord above. Um, but, you know, also, also the wisdom, you know, we've done our work and, and we're not, yeah. we're, we're not there. We'll never be there, but we're a work in progress and, and we're still having yeah. fun while we're doing it. Yes, I, I do. I mean, it is funny. Well, I, we both know that God brought us together, but yeah. to have these parallels in our lives is not because I want to be like you. It's because you're ahead of me. And because of you were ahead of me, think about the discussion when I called you on the driveway of that Airbnb where I wasn't okay. I was just like, I don't understand. And you're just, and because you were further along than me, our lives parallel, you were able to be the voice, uh, you know, his voice of wisdom, of uh, you know, direction direction. And, um, and so, yes, I look forward to, I mean, I don't like the valleys and I don't like that you continue to get to have podcasts because of my life. I'm kidding. You know that, you know what I mean by that, but I'm like, why do I always have to be the material? You're giving me great material this go around, but you know what? If the only thing you and I have to talk about is hot chocolate bonbons and your charcuterie board, we can do a whole podcast on that too. Okay. (laughs) Yes, girlfriend. We can, we can. Our friendship is amazing. You taught me how to love myself, how to be comfortable in my skin. You've taught me so much Dee. I think about as I sit in this chair, I think about when you were straight in front of my face and you were putting the makeup on me and how nervous I was. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, you've just taught me, uh, so much. I'm so grateful for it. You know, this, I mean, our relationship isn't about D teaches Holly because you always say, Holly, you're teaching me. I'm like, what am I teaching you? Um, but, uh, I'm so grateful, wow. thankful, um, for everything that we are, we're, we are going through together and mm-hmm. sharing and, and trying to put it out there in a public way, which is if we can help women survive and thrive. I mean, I know I use that word a lot because it is true. It, mm-hmm. You know, it's not just about surviving. It's about thriving in the Valley where yeah. you really, we really, uh, yeah. I remember putting my head down on the washing machine uh, I still struggle with releasing of my mm. tears. I just can't, I, I, I hope to get there one day, but just when you're just so distraught, but, um, but, but hold on tight, hold. If I could say t- anything to these women, mm. if you're in that season of life, hold on tight because there's something bigger and better out there. And I know there's a lot of women and men in these seasons yeah. um, because I hear about it you know, Oh my goodness, this or that. And, and just hold on tight and believe in more and always believe that you are worthy of more. Mm -hmm. You're right. You know, that's so beautiful and it's so true. Um, and, and I think too, uh, and this was my experience, you know, while holding on tight and holding on for dear life in some situations, um, learning to let go and, let myself emotionally go. And I struggled with that. You know, I was always just the buttoned up, you know, the girl who just kept her stuff together and march on, you know, my mom would always say chin up. And I I was just that person. And I, me too. I did myself a disservice actually by being that person because I blocked the feeling and I blocked the vulnerability because I had to march on and I had to carry on and I had to be, I had to be the doer and the decision maker. And I had to make, I had to make things happen. Um, and I, I didn't get a chance to be a woman. If that make does that make sense? Um, I didn't get a chance. Kind of, but tell me what you mean. You well, didn't get to be your true. Well, you didn't get to be I vulnerable. Didn't get to be, correct. And that's where I'm heading. I didn't get to be the full expression of this woman, you know, and it's not to say that women are just emotional not at all. No, women, women are all things. Women are strong. Women are capable. Women are producers. They are providers. They are nurturers. They are caregivers. They are firm and they are vulnerable and emotional. But I, I, I was in such um, drive mode because I had to be that I think yes. I did not. I did not allow room for the vulnerability because I had no bandwidth for anything to take me down. I had to keep moving and going out of necessity, out of providing, out Mm -hmm. of doing. And I think what you brought into my world and where I give you so much credit, and I've also been burned in friendships in the past where I've shared things and my trust was betrayed. So I even, I even had this sense of, you know, well, who can I really trust? 
And you came in and there was just a quality about you that was so real and raw and honest. And um, there was such a sense, I can't explain it, Holly, I can't explain it, but there was just a sense that I had about you that I could give you my heart and you would hold it and you would care for it. And you would let me fill out the woman that I was designed to be. So that's where I thank you because that was an expression that I really wasn't given. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful. There was a reason you came into my life when you did, because it was something I desperately needed. So there. I remember. Thank you. Like D, thank yeah. you. I remember that day. I remember where we we're sitting. I remember where, um, situations in our lives and the communication we we're having mm -hmm. and that it's like, you know, you turn in any relationship, you turn corners and that was a corner where I, because of what I'd been through, mm -hmm. I was able to help you with situations you were going through mm -hmm. and be very matter of fact, because you know, I'm going to just be like black and white and just say it like it, like, like I mean it. And, and I'm so thankful and grateful that you've got to experience a healthy relationship with another woman. And, and I know why it didn't happen because D you're such a beautiful person inside. Do you hear me say inside? Yeah. And then the beauty on the outside. I mean, everybody's like, oh my gosh, you know, she's Dominique sucks a beautiful. I'll never forget when I was told that I'm like, it's so funny, but, but, but hold on, but hold on. Of course. I mean, you're absolutely beautiful, but what people don't know is your true beauty inside that you are just, I mean, you're probably more, you're probably more kind than I am just the way you are. I mean, I think about when you were like reaching out to me in this and you're like, take my calls. I'm like, I can't talk. I just can't talk. And you're like, okay, I'm here. And I'm like, okay. Um, so I'm, I'm so grateful that people are getting to see this aspect of you because you are just like, Oh my gosh, Dominique sucks. But what they really need to know is you're just D just like me. Mm -hmm. And that's why we work I know. because there's a whole lot of me in you. Yeah. Um, and, and I can't honestly imagine how you live your life. I don't know how you live your life. I, I, I see comments. I, I don't look at much, to, but I'm very proud of you. You're a woman of noble, amazing character and people like I kind of tease. I'm like, Oh my gosh, you're like the fan clubs. They're kind of like kind of crazy. But, um, <laughs> cause you know, I'm like, what is this? But, but, but you're a woman worthy of a fan club because you're beautiful inside and out. And, I just, if I could tell anybody that, or like people that like, no, 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 like, like, like you're beautiful inside and out and they, you are getting to share that more on your podcast. You know, mm -hmm. when people see you like who you are on the camera. Oh, you're even better in person. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm just proud of you. I'm proud that, I mean, this is, I'm so you coming into my life has made me stronger and happier and healthier. And if there's anything else I can do like for other women, cause that's my true loves to like help women in, in the situations that I might've been through. And, and I have so many topics that I can discuss, um, whether it be from adoption to, mm -hmm. you know, you know, surgeries to all these different topics, as much as I don't like that I can speak on all those topics. I'm grateful for them that I can use them like you are helping these women. You, you try and think of these topics, like how you can grow them and, and help them. And I just, how blessed are we that we are being used in this arena in his arena to, to help others in a crazy time of life. I mean, like, I'm sorry, this world is not exactly like, okay. No, it's not. Okay. It's not. Um, and, and we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about all that, but it is kind of getting scary. Yeah. I, I, just the way I've been even treated in this season with like the management company and the owner of that place. It's just, it's so revealing of people's character, like there true is true character that seems to be really off. There's a harshness really off. and a soullessness 
that I'm seeing yes. that is concerning. It is very concerning. And I don't I know where, how, when um, people got so off track to lose compassion for one another. Um, you know, you, you lose compassion and you don't care anymore about your neighbor, then you've got a lawless society. And I'm not, I'm not going to get into politics. That's not my lane. It's not my thing. You know, we all have our beliefs. And like I said, there are many platforms where you can go follow people who, who talk on, on that realm. Um, but what I'm, what I'm talking about and what you're alluding to is just a lack of moral character, um, Absolutely. Un unscrupulousness, um, harshness, and, and just sometimes evil. And that's, that's where the concern lies. And, you know, if, if more people aren't aware and sensitive to it, um, you know, we just, we need to right the ship. And um, that's kind of what I feel like for my platform, it's, it's about, and it's why I love having you because these open, real, honest conversations. I love this. Yeah. I love it. You know, this is about, this is about being real. This is about sharing life's journey. It's about overcoming hurdles and obstacles, but it's about encouragement and it's about leaving people hopefully better than where they were an hour or an hour and a half ago or however long yes. this thing has been running. I don't know. I've lost track of time, but I know. But, but I'm you surprised know Court think? hasn't come to see us. I know. I'm surprised <laughs> Courtney hasn't shut us off. I think and Courtney's already driving me to Houston. I think she's like, all right, I'm done with you two. Um, and she's, she's coming to see me. For, she's, she's just going to for a weekend. There she's popping on. Oh, um, there she is. Family, <laughs> but but yeah, I mean oh. the whole the whole point of what I enjoy doing is is what you enjoy doing: inspiring, educating, bringing people, bringing thought leaders, bringing people with a story to the conversation to just get you to think. You know, just think, act differently, act from a place, come from a place of love, come from a place of informed, intelligent, you know, come from a place of knowledge. Don't come from a place of hurt, pain, because you tend to lash out and do things that, you know, really make the world a worse place and not a better place when you do that. So anyway. OD, like when I'm with what you're saying to me, it's that people have lost the sense of loving themselves. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they are not loving others. Like mm -hmm. they're not loving themselves because they're not happy with their life, whether it's yep. their job or their financial status or whatever. I mean, all the ingredients. But when, when people or me, I'll speak for myself, stop loving myself, that's mm -hmm. when the icky yucky of myself and you got it too comes out. So if we can get back to the nature of everyone working on themselves and loving themselves, being comfortable in their skin, even though they might not like the ingredients that are in their life, mm -hmm. but working towards loving those ingredients, there will be more grace and kindness and and, and just, oh, just, I just think it would be better. I, when, when I am treated so poorly by others, all I can think of is, wow, mm -hmm. you're so unhappy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it comes from people that are incredibly blessed. And you're like, you still are going to act like that. Yeah. I just yeah. wish that people would work on loving themselves. Therefore they could be kinder to others. I agree with you. I agree. And, and to, to, you know, how can I make a difference in somebody's life? What can I do to elevate somebody else today and get out of your own world and out of your own head and, and make somebody else feel special and valued and cared for, you know, that, that is the quickest way to feel better about yourself is to care for somebody else and say something and do something loving. So I'm going to, say here's one I easy tip hold on right. one one real real quick tip and i think i've told you this if you go into a restaurant and you sit at the bar whether you're going to have a drink or eat make sure to inter ask the ask the uh waiter waitress um their name mm -hmm. and share your name and that has been the most fun enjoyable thing that i've done with each one of my days and mm -hmm. it's so exciting to see that person be seen they're like, wait, I'm a person. So if that's one fun little tip that we can share, like go out and acknowledge the people that are serving you and mm -hmm. make them a person and you become a person to them. That's exactly right. And validate, you know, yeah. people just want to be validated. They want to be seen and they want yes. to be heard. So it's so yes. basic. Yes. So I mean, I know basic. I so know we're over, but I'm like, I just have uh -huh. to share that because I just really enjoy that, yeah. that exercise. 
yeah. and humanity. I agree with you. I agree. It's a beautiful exercise. And, and, and we can all, you know, if, if we leave you with that encouragement, exercise right. your humanity, you know, and make this Ooh, world left them with homework, part. girlfriend. Yes. I mean, we left them with some homework. Good. Homework. <laughs> That's what everybody wanted. <laughs> hey, know, this right? is a good kind of homework. Um, I love you. If, if you need you. me for anything, if you need me to help move, you need someone else. I, and I'm, I feel so blessed because you've got such a, a beautiful, wonderful friend group in Houston. And I know they have rallied around yeah, you, you. Yeah. and I'm so grateful for them. And I know you are too. You have just been showered with support, which is amazing. And it also gives me peace because I'm not there, but if you need me for anything, and I, and I say that in any and every way, I'm here for you. I love you. I know my audience loves you. I love and, you and I too. know they cannot wait to uh, hear how this journey goes. And so I'm not going to say it yeah. ends up because it's a journey. And so there must it's be journeys throughout the way. Yeah. Just so people know how you're doing and how you're adjusting. There's so many beautiful life lessons in all of that. And if you're open to it, yeah. I would just love to have you come back um, once you get up there and settle in and, and just give us your thoughts. Oh. Uh, we'll start out with a, a water ski video. Stay tuned. Oh, well, that's a YouTube video. <laughs> that's your best friend going down I did, hard. I did <laughs> face plant last weekend, but and I'm still here to tell the tale. But I do have to give out a shout out to Roberta. Thank you for pulling me through this flood. You know her well. She's been an mm -hmm. amazing friend. Yep. Um, but I just, I mean, come on. Hey, hands in the air for, for, for that friendship because she's, uh, she's loved me well when you weren't here and yeah. Yes. Yes. And grateful, grateful for her and others. Yeah. 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 And all yeah, of that, yeah, all of that absolutely. Very challenging um, season. So, yeah, yeah. and you know what, and, and I know that they're going to miss you too. Um, oh, yeah. leaving, leaving you is hard, Holly. So I know a lot of people are going to be hurting, um, because it's, it's not easy being away from you. Oh, well, it's not easy being away from you. And that's why they have planes, trains, and, and automobiles. <laughs> <laughs> and we will be on something with wheels. <laughs> I know. Until our next journeys. Let's just hope that they're not as crazy as this podcast. But if they are, stay yeah. tuned. I mean, who knows? Who knows? That's what makes life so great. <laughs> the Chronicles of Thelma and Louise. And Louise. <laughs> I love you. I, I love you. you. Keep, right. keep killing it. Thank and you, until Thank next you. time. Mwah. Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors, and they take about 20,000 breaths a day. The indoor air we breathe is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, up to 100 times more polluted, according to the EPA. And did you know that air pollution is responsible for nearly 7 million premature deaths globally? So what's the solution? Introducing an air purifier that captured the attention of established media outlets such as CNN, Money, ABC, and more, Air Doctor. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% .99 of dangerous contaminants so your lungs don't have to. This includes pollutants such as allergens, pollen, pet dander, dust mites, mold spores, even bacteria and viruses that make you sick. Air Doctor comes with a 30-day Breathe Easy Money Back Guarantee, so if you don't love it, just send it back for a refund minus shipping. Head to airdoctorpro.com and use promo code OVER50, and you'll receive up to $300 off air purifiers. Exclusive to podcast customers, you will also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Lock this special offer by going to airdoctorpro.com and use promo code OVER50.